In this video, I'm going to compare the divergence and the curl of electric fields. So two of Maxwell's equations are focused around electric fields, specifically the divergence and the curl of electric fields. This is all in differential form, so I'm not going to talk about the integral form of Maxwell's equations. This video is purely discussing the differential form because it's more convenient for uh, theoretical discussions. You don't have to worry about integrating over surfaces or volumes. We're just interested in these operators over here. So here we have curl. You can see it's the del operator. And we're taking the cross product. So that's curl. And this is divergence, because we're taking the del operator and we're taking the dot product with the del operator. And this is all about electric fields. So there's no magnetic fields over here, except in this term over here. But we're just talking about the curl and the divergence of electric fields. So on the left, we have Gauss's law. This is usually listed as the first of Maxwell's equations. And then we have Faraday's law of induction. And that's usually listed as number three. So we have number one and number three, and they're concerned with the electric field. So what is divergence uh, as a physical property? Divergence tells you how things come out, how things emanate from a source. Curl tells you how things circulate around at every single point. So the curl vector is defined at a point, and it points in the axis of rotation. So if you were to put a paddle in this imaginary fluid of the vector field, that's the direction along which the paddle would rotate. And you, you use the right-hand rule to determine if it's positive pointing in that direction or negative pointing in the other direction. So that's curl, and that's divergence. Let's have a look at what Gauss's law says about the divergence of the electric field. So what does it say on the right-hand side over here? Well, here we have charge density. And then we have epsilon naught in the denominator. And this is a constant. It's the permittivity of free space. And this guy tells you the density of charge at every single point in space. So this is a scalar quantity. Uh, and we're dividing by a scalar quantity. So the right-hand side is a scalar. And the divergence, when you take the divergence, what you do is you differentiate with respect to each of the coordinates. And then you take the sum of all those derivatives. And that overall gives you a scalar. So both of these sides are scalars. Both of these sides are actually vectors, because uh, taking the cross product is always going to give you a vector that's perpendicular to the two input vectors. And this over here, you're differentiating a vector quantity, so that's going to give you a vector as well. But you're going to have to flip the direction because of this negative sign. And this negative sign is usually called Lenz's law. Lenz's law tells you the direction of this circulation. So let's compare and contrast uh, some of the aspects between the divergence and the curl. The divergence depends on a scalar quantity, the charge density. So if there's charge there, then you're going to have divergence. If it's a positive charge, it's positive divergence. It's coming out. If it's a negative charge. Things are going in towards. So it's the termination point of electric field lines. And if there's no charge at all, if there's no charge density, or the charge density is 0, that means rho is equal to 0, well then the divergence is also equal to 0. What about the case for curl? Well, curl for the electric field can only be produced if you have a changing uh, magnetic field. And if you have a changing magnetic field, that is a non-zero time derivative of the magnetic field, then you're going to get some kind of circulation. So that's what curl represents. It's a circulation, and it's a vector quantity that tells you the axis of the rotation. So what does it mean to partially differentiate with respect to time? Well, that's, that's concerning the time evolution of the magnetic field. So if the magnetic field is constant, and it's not changing at all, then this term will be 0, and there's not going to be any circulation. But if there's either a positive or a negative change to the magnetic field at a given point, then that point is going to have an associated curl. And it's going to be a non-zero curl. So if you want to set the curl equal to 0, you have to have a constant magnetic field. And that's actually applicable in magnetostatics. In magnetostatics, you have constant magnetic fields. And then all of this curl is actually going to disappear. You're going to have a curl of 0. And that's a nice uh, property to work with. Whereas if, if you want to have a divergence of 0 for the electric field, then you cannot have any charges. And that's actually the case in a vacuum or in free space. There's no charges in a vacuum. So those are some of the properties of the curl of the electric field and the divergence of the electric field. 
and they are actually summarized in Gauss's law and Faraday's law of induction. And implicitly, we actually have the qualitative statement that's usually stated as Lenz's law, which is given by this negative sign. And that's saying that the circulation, or this curl, is actually going to point in the opposite direction, or it's going to oppose the change in the magnetic field. So that's an opposing change. So in summary, this video is just here to give you a quick comparison of the divergence of the electric field and the curl of the electric field. So these are very important uh, concepts and very important operations you can apply to vector fields. So this has been the divergence versus the curl of electric fields.